Hello everyone, in this video, I'm going to explain to you the algebraic proof of the Van der Waals ethicity, which is shown in here. In order to prove this, we need the use of the Newton's binomial theorem, which states that x plus 1 raised to m is equal to summation of m chooses r, x raised to r, from r equal to 0 until m. Now, let us start with our proof. Let me get a term like this, so we'll get this one, and another term like that, but different exponent, n. Then by algebra, we can combine both these terms, so we'll get x plus 1 raised to the sum of m and n, which is m plus n. Now we can apply this theorem in here. So if you compare this one to this one, the exponent here is m plus n, but here m only. So in here, in the summation, Instead of m, we're going to use m plus n, and for here, m, we're going to use m plus n instead. We can also apply this theorem for each term in here. So for this one, similar to that, but we're going to use k instead of r, and in here, we will use n instead of m, and also we're going to use a variable p instead of r. Then observe that the variable k in here is not contained in this summation and the variable p in here is not contained in this summation. So we can combine both summations. So the resulting expression is this one. Double summation with k equal to 0 until m, which is this one. Here, p is equal to 0 until n, which is this one. And the combinatorial terms, m chooses k and here n chooses p. And we can combine both x, we'll get x raised to the sum of k and p. Now, we can transform this expression, changing the variable p into r, with the following relationship, r is equal to r is equal to k plus p. We can rearrange this to find p, which is equal to r minus k. Now, by that transformation, we'll get this p will become r minus k in here, and this k plus p will be equal to r in here. And here p is equal to 0, then r will become equal to k only. So we have here r is equal to k, and if p is equal to n, we'll get here r is equal to k plus n. So we'll have here k plus n. Now observe that. The k in the inner summation is coming from the k from the outer summation. And k is equal to 0 until m only. k doesn't exceed m. So k is always less than or equal to m. And m is always greater than or equal to k. Now, I want to change this k plus n into m plus n. Then, Based on this relationship, or this one, m plus n is greater than or equal to k plus n. So in here, I have excess terms, that is from k plus n plus 1 until m plus n. So in order to make them equal, we need to subtract this by that excess amount, which is from r is equal to k plus n plus 1 until m plus n because of this excess term. So the difference of these expressions will be equal to this expression. Now, let us concentrate ourselves on this expression. In here, r starts from k plus n plus 1 until m plus n. So here, r is always greater than k plus n. Or by rearrangement, r minus k, if we put k to the left, r minus k will be always greater than n. Then what happens if r minus k is greater than n? If we check this combinatorial term, n chooses r minus k, we can expand this and we'll get this one, n factorial over n minus r minus k factorial and r minus k. Then, if r minus k is greater than n, in here, we will get a factorial of a negative number, 
because this armaments k is greater than n based on this one. Then what is a factorial of a negative number? Let me show you an example. A factorial of negative 5 is equal to negative 5. Then times negative 5 minus 1 is negative 6. Then negative 7, etc. until negative infinity. So what is then the factorial of negative 5? It can be positive infinity or negative infinity. But either way, if we divide n factorial by that infinity, it will become zero. So this term will be approaching zero, then the whole term will become zero. So it is okay to change this k plus n into m plus n. Now I want to change this r equals to k into r equal to zero. Then I have excess terms that is from r equal to zero until k minus one, that is before r equals to k. Then the difference of these expressions will be equal to this one. Now let us concentrate on this one. r here is from zero until k minus one only, so r is always less than k. Then what happens if r is less than k? So similar to above, if we evaluate this one and choose as r minus k, we'll get this one. Then this r minus k will become negative because k is always greater than r. So we will have here a factorial of a negative number, which can be negative infinity or positive infinity. Either way, we'll get zero for this term. So it's okay to put it zero. Then it is okay to change this r equals to k into r equals to zero. Now observe that if we compare this one to this one, we already eliminated the case in the inner summation in this one. So this inner summation no longer dependent on the k in the outer summation. So it is okay to interchange these summations. We'll get this one. That is r equal to 0 until m plus n coming from here and here. And this one, k equal to 0 until m coming from here and this one. The rest are the same. Now, I want to change this m into r. But unlike before, r here can be greater than or equal to or less than m. So, case 1, where r is greater than or equal to m, if we change m into r, and case 2, r is less than m if we change m into r. So let us concentrate on case 1 first. In here, r is greater than or equal to m, then these terms can have excess terms that we need to subtract. Then in this case, we have that excess terms that is from k equals to m plus 1 until r. And observe that in this expression, k is always greater than m because k coming from m plus 1 because k starts from m plus 1 until r. Then what happens if k is greater than m? If we evaluate this combinatorial term, m chooses k, we'll get m factorial over m minus k factorial than k factorial. And this m minus k will become negative, considering that k is greater than m, then we will have here a factorial of a negative number. So we'll get here infinity and eventually we'll get zero. So this term will become zero. So it is okay here for case one to change this m into r. But how about case two? r is less than m. Then if we change this m into r, but r is less than m, then we lost some terms that is from r plus one until m. So in here, we add those terms and we put here k is equal to r plus 1 until m. Now in here, k is always greater than r. 
because k starts from r plus 1 until m. So what happens if k is greater than r? By evaluating this combinator term, we will have here a factorial of a negative number because this r minus k will become negative when k is greater than r. Then we have here a n factorial over n infinity and eventually we'll get a zero for this one. So this one will become zero. So in both cases, it is okay to change m into r for this inner summation. Now let me rewrite this one in here. So this is the same with this one, our resulting expression. But remember that before we evaluated this one, which is equal to this one, which is equal to our resulting expression. We evaluated this one, y algebra, to be like this. And we applied the theorem in here, and we got this. So this one is also equal to our resulting expression. So let us put it there, which is now this one. So comparing both expressions here and here is the same and this one and this one so this one actually is the coefficient of x raised to r in here and this one is the coefficient of x raised to r in here and by algebra if we equate these expressions we need to equate the coefficients of the variables. So, by taking this one, this inner summation, and this combinatorial term here, we'll get this one. And if you compare this equation in our one term one test identity, this one, they are the same. So, this completes our proof for our one-to-one-death identity.